Right then guys, I'm going to show you my winter mix. Um, step one basically is uh, I'm going to soak the tears and um, hem. You can do it for 12 hours but I prefer to do it for 24 just to make sure. But as you can see, most of it is sunk. You can't really see how much is sunk but there's only a little bit on the top floating. There's about two and a half, three key in there. Um, so I've soaked that for 12 hours. Um, second step will be getting a fire going. Danny's kindly started it for me. Um, third step will be just show you a minute. Get a big pan. It's our fishing pan as you can see, nice and black, it doesn't matter. Um, literally rain water. Don't use normal water out of a tap, whatever you do. Um, it had chlorine in, fish don't like it. We tried it before when we first when we first started out doing our own, fish don't like it. Use rainwater or your own lake water, wherever you fish. Just take it out and take it home and soak it. Um, fill that with rainwater, put the mess on top of the fire, and then I'll let that boil, and then I'll show you what to do after that. Next step is I've got a pan of rainwater, like I said. We didn't get it from our lake. Um, put it on top of the fire. I've soaked the fire up. That will probably do for our whole thing. You can do it on gas. You can do it on whatever you want. We're doing it basically on, a, on this because we have log fires in the house and it's a lot cheaper for us to do it like this. So we're doing it like that. As soon as the water's boiling, um, I'll shove my hemp in it. As you can see, I've not got much water in the pan because I've got um, all my water still from from my, uh, my tears and my uh, hem, which I don't want to throw that away because all the goodness is coming out, all the oils, all the all the nutrients of, of the hemp and tears are coming out in that water, so I don't want to throw it away, I want that in my mix, so as soon as that starts boiling, I'll put that in there, um, when it gets boiling, it should take up 30 to 45 minutes for your, for your um, hemp to crack, for the tails to come out. So when that gets boiling, we'll show you the next step. If you want to make it get boiling a bit quicker, you can put some over the top, but make sure it's not wood or plastic, so it doesn't burn or melt. Make sure it's metal. Um, keeps a bit of the heat in there, but we're in no rush, so we're just going to leave it like that. Right then, guys. The water has come to boil. Came back out about five minutes after, five, ten minutes after, and it's boiling. So all I'm going to do is pour my hem and my tears with the water straight into there. Obviously, it won't be boiling when I put it in because it's cold water. Um, just be careful when you're doing it because obviously it's fire and I don't want you burning yourself. Um, but literally all I'm going to do is get it. Pour it in there. That's empty. As you can see, it's all floating at the minute. As that boils, we'll just go down. Obviously you'll get a few that float that, that aren't very good. We're not too worried about them. That's the next step. So that, that'll that take probably a bit more than 45 minutes because it's not the boil. But come back to that every 10 minutes, checking it, giving it a quick stir to make sure it's all all mixed up. Um, but yeah, that's the next step. Now that's on it the way I thought I'd tell you. I forgot to tell you in the last video. Um, whatever you do, do not put any salt in while it's cooking. Um, it won't split. Well, it will, um, but it'll take a long, lot, lot, lot longer. It'll take probably about ten hours. Um, we did it when we first ever did it a couple of years ago. Um, but even even when you're soaking it for 12, 24 hours, however long you're soaking it, don't put any salt in it. Don't put your salt or anything in it until after it's boiled and it's in your mix or you've finished boiling it or whatever but whatever you do don't put it in um, you can put chilli flakes in it, you can put other things in it but don't put the salt in it, whatever you do right then guys, um, come out about 20 minutes later boiling, um, you won't really be able to see it because it's dark now but it's starting to crack some of it, it's all sunk which I don't know if you'll be able to see it get some in my spoon player I don't know if you're able to see it, but it's starting to crack. 
Um, all I'm going to do now, a couple of maze, because it's nearly there, it'll only be another 10 minutes. Probably amazing. Get that cooking ready. That won't float at all. That won't float at all. That naturally sinks, so that should all go to the bottom. Um, we'll come back out in another 10 minutes and check it. And it should be done. Take it off the heat. Let it cool. Um, probably be tomorrow or <laughs> next day and all. When we do the mix, I'll show you. It's pretty much the same as Dan is. Right then, guys. Um, come out another 5 minutes. It's been on 45 minutes now. It's fully cracked. Um, so I'm going to take it off the heat and let it cool down. Like I say, I won't be doing the mix, it'll be a couple of days or whatever, I get a bit of time, just let it cool down. Um, I'll get some photos here for you, a bit cracked, etc, to show you, because I can't really show you in this light. So basically, that is my hem and tears and maze done, um, and I'll show you my mix. Thank you. Right, James has just put the uh, his mix straight from that hot pan into this uh, cold plastic bucket bowl. Um, give it a chance to cool down. This at this point, this is when you can start ag adding your uh, salt and um, whatever else you want to add, additives, oil. Um, it's safe to do it at this point. Now it's all cracked, so uh, leave it to dry not dry, cool down and there uh, James will get it in his mix show you what he puts in and um, hopefully it should capture some fish over the winter nice one right then guys um, as you saw we put the hemp in the in the air uh, bowl um, it's cooled down lay it cool for a day um, now it's the time to put the ingredients in it um, as you can see, I've got my hemp, my tears, and my maize in there. All nicely cracked, tails are out. I've still got all my water left in, I'm not going to get rid of that because my maize and my pellets will soak it up. So, first of all, I'm going to add his maize just from a local pet shop, straight out of the bag. Sorry. In. Straight in. That'll dry a lot of the goodness up from your hem so it still stays in your mix. That, it'll still look really wet but it'll dry a lot of it up when you're leaving it to settle. See, it's already well. You might not be able to see, but I can feel it's getting stiffer. Second of all, um, two or three mil halibut pellets. Got just over a kilo of these. All I'm going again. That'll dry it up. Mix that in. These little baits keep the fish searching, keep them on the feed. Once you've got them there, you want them to keep feeding. You've got to remember in winter that the fish might only take one bait and go off for a few weeks. Um, so they want it to be your bait, you want them there. Um, so yeah, finally. I'm just going to add some blood worm pellet. I'll also add some maggots, but that'll be, um, I'll do that just before the session so they're alive. Um, I know that Danny, Danny has his in his mix for dead, just for different reasons really. He likes his on his spot so they don't crawl around. 
I just like mine. A bit alive, I think it gives it a bit more attraction. Um, I've already added some salt, did that when it was hot. And I, I also added some sugar to sweeten it up. But as you can see, that's getting quite stiff now. And that, that water, the remaining water, will dry. Um, that's pretty much it. I won't really add anything else. If it stays too wet, which I'm pretty sure it will, I'll add a bit more vital in. But well, that's my pretty much my mix. So that's what I'll be using for my winter mix. Probably fish a pop up of that or an 18 mil cell from Steamer Baits. Well, that's my mix. Um, if there's any questions or anything, give us an email. Me, Danny, Harry, or Alex will answer it. Thanks for watching. Right then, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit more about um, why I'd use this and uh, what rigs and, and things I'd use over it. Um, I'll start off my rigs. Uh, I'll fish smaller baits in winter. Usually, me personally, I use bright, bright pop ups, 10 mil, um, Frutella, Indian Spice, bright colours. I think it catches the fish's eye. And like I said, fish, they usually only take one, two baits, and they don't, they don't really feed much, so you want to make sure it's your bait, so I want it to stand out. Um, the rigs that I'd use over it, it'd be a lot shorter rigs, because the fish are a lot slower, they're not moving around, they're staying on one spot, focused. So, I want I want my bait on top of my spot, because say, uh, my spot might only be as big as this boat, and I don't want a long rig on it, or it probably won't even be as big as that. So I don't want my rig on the outside or wherever. I need to be accurate. Um, my casting will be spot on. Can't, can't afford to for my for my um, for my rig to be away from it. It's got to be on it to catch. Uh, I'd use particle instead of boilers because boilers in the winter stay really hard, um, and the fish can't really digest them. They don't really they don't really like them. Uh, so generally stay away from them. Obviously you'll catch the one or two, but if if you want to be success successful, um, me and Danny for definite, I use no particle mixes. Danny's quite quite similar. Similar. He's got a bit more pellet in than me, and dead maggot, and I'll be putting live maggot in mine. But um, pretty much the same. Very far to tell you what I'll fish over it. Um, and obviously might help you out in your fishing. I hope you uh, bag them up this winter. Thank you.